What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about how to get deep and moody blue tones in your images. One of my most popular videos on this channel uh, is how to edit earthy green tones. I shot that almost two years ago now and despite the poor video quality, it's doing really well. So I wanna get back to those videos talking about how to get very specific color combinations um, and very unique edits within Adobe Lightroom. If you guys are new to the channel, what's up? My name is Sean. I am a photographer and online photography teacher. If you're trying to improve your photography skills or editing skills or anything even related to that, then I definitely recommend you guys subscribe. I put out videos every week related to this content, and I hope you guys will stick around to see future videos that I'm gonna make. But all right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna jump on my computer and show you guys exactly how to edit these deep, moody blue tones. Let's get after it. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. I have an image here that I shot in Taipei, Taiwan. Really cool image um, of Taipei 101 here through a phone. And the reason why I chose this image as an example for this, for this edit is because we have a lot of dark areas. And one of the first things I want you to think about when you're editing this dark, moody, emotional blue style is it's not going to work with every image. It's not going to work with an image shot in the middle of the day with bright sun. It just doesn't go with the vibe. Of course, photography is all subjective and you can make it work, but I think it works especially well with images that have a lot of dark areas that are kind of already a little bit moody to start. So this image, I underexposed it a little bit to make sure we had detail uh, in the highlights um, and just some good detail in the shadows here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys three different ways to edit these deep moody tones. Two of them I recommend, and one is the biggest mistake that I see people make when they're trying to edit this style. So what I'm gonna do first is just go through and do some basic edits. Um, just some really basic ones here. We're not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, but essentially what I'm just doing is dictating the tones here. So I'm, I'm making sure the contrast is where it is, but I'm not affecting the overall colors very much. All right, the basic looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna move down to the tone curve and I'm gonna do my basic S curve here. Now the S curve is great. It's just gonna soften things out um, and just make the image um, nice and easy on the eyes. And then I'm gonna come back up here, raise the exposure a little bit, just keep kind of fine tuning everything. All right, that looks good. So once you get these basic tonal edits out of the way, it's time to move on to getting that blue color in those shadows, that moody blue tone. And the way I like to do it, and I think this is the most effective way, is to jump into the tone curve RGB and go to the red channel. Now I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard here and I'm gonna click and add three points, four points actually. And the reason why I'm holding Alt is because if I just, if I don't hold Alt and I add a point, it's gonna skew the line a little bit. So I'm just using Alt to make sure the line doesn't move. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this point only and just very, very subtly drag it down. Did you see that? And what that's gonna do is add blues in the shadows. That looks pretty good. So we have that nice, deep, moody blue look. And that's pretty much all it takes to get it. Now, even if you go into the HSL sliders to saturation and reduce the blues, it's only gonna reduce the blues that were in the image already, not the blues that you added in the tone curve, which is pretty cool. So this is the way I like to do it. And um, actually, I would say 95% of my images have blues in the shadows. I think it looks awesome. It looks moody, it looks emotional. Um, and it's just a look that I really like. And you can just keep going with it. You know, like that, that's pretty blue. I think that looks really, really cool though. I know some photographers on Instagram, all of their images are really, really blue like this. And it looks awesome. But that's the first way to do it. I'm gonna reset the tone curve here so we have natural colors. Um, and for this next example, for, for the second way you can do this, I'm not gonna be using the RGB channels at all. In fact, I'm gonna come down here to the split toning area. And split toning is awesome because essentially what it allows you to do is add colors into the highlights or the shadowed areas of your image. So if I hold Alt on my keyboard and click the hue here and drag, it's gonna show me what 100% saturation of each color is gonna look like. So this is the highlights. So you can see it's only really affecting the highlights of the image. And for this image, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do the shadows. And I'm gonna hold Alt and drag all the way to this bluish color. I'm gonna release Alt and then what I can do is just slowly bring the saturation up to the point where I like it. 
and that is going to really add um, blue over the shadow parts of the images it's a little less um distinct than the tone curve and that's why i like the tone curve is because this is going to affect the shadows the highlights a little bit it's just going to add blue in areas that you might not want but if you do do this you can always come and use a selective brush here to uh, add some warmth in other parts of the images just so they're not so blue um, just to kind of even it out so that's another way i recommend is using uh, the split toning feature here it's pretty cool um, and it's a, a function that i really like so those are the two that i i recommend the most number one is tone curve number two is split toning the third way that i don't recommend that some of the other youtubers uh, creating videos on this content are doing is dragging the temperature slider down now i don't like this because it affects all of the image it affects the entire white balance of the image and i just don't think it looks one very natural and two it's just adding blue in areas that we just really don't want blue that's why i like using the tone curve it's more specific it lets us add colors where we want them to be um, and not where we want them to be so but that's all i got for you guys hope it was helpful um i really like doing these quick and easy lightroom tutorials i think they're packed full of knowledge even though they're nice and short and easy to digest um if you guys want to learn more about adobe lightroom i have an epic course on how to find your own unique editing style and in that course i talk about not only all the functions of lightroom how to use lightroom properly all the different sliders photo organization everything related to that but also how to find your own unique editing style, what that process looks like, how to go about it. Um, and I think that's really important in this day and age because everyone's a photographer. And if we want to stand out, we have to make sure that our style is unique to some degree. Um, but that's all I got for you guys. Uh, please leave your thoughts down below. I uh, want to hear what you think of this video. And if you have any other video ideas, please let me know. Um, once again, my name is Sean and I will see you guys in the next few days with my next upload. Have a good one.